protesters and security forces. Human rights groups continue to sound the alarm over multiple arrests and killings, but one high-profile victim has made an amazing reappearance. RT's Ivor Bennett reports on the media's quick-fire reactions to the expen at the expense of fact-checking. She was hailed as the flower of Syria, the symbol of the suffering under President Bashar Assad's brutal regime. At least that's what much of the Western media said after the apparent butchering of Zainab al-Hosni. We have viewed pictures of what was done to Zainab's corpse and they are simply too gruesome to air. Several Western media outlets were quick to report al-Hosni's gruesome death, apparently the first woman killed in government custody. But now it appears she's miraculously back from the dead, even being interviewed on Syrian TV. I came to the police station to say the truth. That's what I say to those lying channels. I'm now still alive, not dead. Human rights groups like Amnesty International jumped on the bandwagon too, reporting Al Hosni was tortured, murdered and mutilated. It even claimed her mother found the body in a morgue last month. All assertions is now being forced to backtrack on. We will endeavour to be you know, more cautious um, and phrase things a little bit uh, more um, nuanced. The state broadcaster says the interviews to dispel what it labels fabrications by foreign media to serve Western interests. It's stories like this that have been used to prop up calls from the US, Britain and France for UN sanctions to be slapped on Syria. But their foundations are now looking shakier than ever. This footage allegedly shows unarmed pro-Assad civilians being targeted by gun-toting rebels. So perhaps not the peaceful opposition they're often made out to be by the West that only seems to look one way. This notion that the U.S. is now part of this pro-democracy regime is ridiculous. They, they're jumping on that bandwagon as an opportunity to get out in front of it and create this deceptive appearance, while at the same time they're supporting the dictatorships that are aligned with them in the United Nations and as part of their empire. Russia and China vetoed a UN resolution for Syria, seeing through it as a potential cover for another Libyan-style intervention. There may not be any oil this time, but there's always an ulterior motive. Its importance is as a uh, geopolitical factor right next to uh, Israel, a country which obviously uh, America and Britain uh, and the other Western powers strongly support. So that would be the ulterior geopolitical motive. The vetoes were followed by a Security Council walkout from America over remarks during the Syrian envoy's speech. But the US promised to be back with another resolution and undoubtedly more dramatic evidence to drive the point home. Ivor Bennett, RT, London. Syria's presidential advisor has been speaking with RT and says the Syrians want talks and not Western interference. Decisions taken by the Western countries are based not on real events in Syria, but rather on the task of suppressing Syria as an Arabic state. The problem is that some states fund and arm terrorist groups operating in our towns and villages. This makes ordinary people's lives very difficult and puts them in real danger. It's up to the Syrian opposition to protest against foreign interference. The opposition should participate in dialogue for the goal of reform and building a new better Syria. It shouldn't nurture itself or listen to provokers who turn it against dialogue with the government.